About a thousand kilometers north of Bogota, with its high valleys, lies a unique mountain range, the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Reaching 5,800 meters, this pyramid, with its vertiginous slopes, is a land apart. It is the land of an indigenous tribe which has lived here for over 500 years, the Kogis. This is a sacred land, which no one enters without an offering. Anyone who wants to climb the Sierra Nevada must make a spiritual payment, like the Kogis do. It's an exchange. Since we benefit from nature, we must settle our debts in a spiritual way. That is the logic the Kogis use to explain the natural disturbances that befall our planet today. We're taking energy from nature and not paying anything back. Today, we've come to visit Mother Nature. That is no trivial matter. We must cleanse our bodies and minds, washing away any negative thoughts and emotions by unburdening ourselves of them here spiritually. Moreover, we must bring gifts, both thoughts and material gifts, such as money, fruit, and anything we consider to be good and positive. The energy from our thoughts is collected in coca leaves. We present them to Mother Earth through these holes so that she can feed off them. That way, we will be protected as we climb the mountains, and no harm will come to us. As we go deeper into this wild landscape, we are surprised to come across its inhabitants. The Kogi people are the last remaining descendants of the Tarona, one of the largest pre-Columbian societies on the continent. This mountain is their sanctuary. In their eyes, the Sierra Nevada is the center of the universe, the Mother Earth, which dictates the codes of their society. Deforestation has forced the Kogis to take shelter higher up. The climb to their village takes several hours. Central to this community is the Mama, the chief who maintains the social and spiritual order. We Mamas always consult our God. We ask our God how to communicate with others. We consult our God to find out what to say and do. We communicate with our God through the spirit, Sewa. If bubbles appear in this bowl, the answer is yes. Otherwise, the answer is no. Sewa looks after our planet Earth, our water, our lagoons, our sea. Sewa gives us all that, and we must pay for all that. During the Spanish conquest in the 16th century, 500,000 Chipchas and Terronas were counted, decimated by fighting and sickness. Only 25,000 descendants of these indigenous tribes remain, reformed into various groups, including the Kogis, of which only 12,000 individuals remain today. 
Living a secret and isolated existence, the Kogi social structure has remained intact. I founded the villages of Kinkwamero and Tuglaka after I was trained as a mama. All the children you see here are my grandchildren. I have 12 children, 10 girls and two boys. My family, including the grandchildren, has 50 members. The women make bags out of fique and cotton, which they then sell. Weaving these bags is the women's spiritual work. The men's spiritual work is using poporos. These are the tasks that Sewa asks us to carry out. A porporo is a receptacle which contains a white powder that comes from crushed shells. The men use a stick to take a bit of this powder and mix it with a lump of coca they are chewing. This mixture puts them in a trance. It is a ritual in which all of the men participate. This house is reserved for men. It's called a nunwe. Men and women live separately. This is where we hold our spiritual meetings. We also initiate boys to the popero here from the age of 12. In addition, we celebrate girls' passage to adulthood here, when they are ready to get married. There is no hierarchy in Kogi society. All members of the group are equally important, and no decisions are taken without everyone having a say. Spirituality is very important in the life of Kogis. They favor spiritual things and introduce their children to the mysteries of their religion at a very young age. To become a mama, you must be chosen as a baby at the time of your baptism. The chosen few are called quivis. They are given special training in the knowledge of our ancestors. They must learn to carry out our spiritual rituals, but also to help their community. While they are training, quivis must live in caves away from the community. They grow up there in total isolation. Gradually, as time passes, the Quivis absorb all this knowledge into their minds and hearts. As farmers of crops and livestock, the Kogis are in tune with nature. They observe individual phenomena and maintain their equilibrium. They try to protect the land and its resources, of which they consider themselves to be the guardians. A good harvest will be interpreted as a sign of gratitude from the land. The use of fertilizers, pesticides or machinery is forbidden. Kogis communicate with nature. They apologize for the spiritual harm they cause it. We must ask permission for all that we take from nature by sending messages to the forest. To nature, there are certain sacred sites in the forest which no one is allowed to touch. Otherwise, Sewa sends messages because its temple has been destroyed and it conjures up storms and earthquakes to punish humans. It is because of the bad actions of our brothers that the climate is changing. The winters, 
the summers, the rains, nothing is normal anymore. Even here, in the jungle, we are affected by these changes. It affects our crops. Now we get a lot of parasites. Before, for example, there were lots of coffee crops in these mountains. But our miner brothers destroyed the forest. They damaged our land, and coffee has completely disappeared from the Sierra Nevada. Despite entreaties from the state, the Kogi Indians are determined to maintain their autonomy and their isolation from the modern and industrial world. Thank mm -hmm. you.